What's going on, everybody? It's Jan here, and we are doing a development call with Anna today. <clears throat> Anna has been a, a, a pivotal part of the Justice for Hire uh, experience, even though a lot of folks may not know her um, directly. Uh, she was at the very first um, JFH Hero Meetup, which was shot um, as a production. It was a, it was shot as a production because the Hero Meetups that we were doing in New York in person at the time in 2018 uh, were supposed to be, and they are part of the, the canonical Justice for Hire cinematic universe. So um, it, Anna's been there for from the beginning uh, uh, and uh, Juice, she, she came there with, with the first time Juice was there. A lot of folks know Juice from episode three of season zero. Uh, Born Majestic from Legendary Cyphers, like a, a whole part of uh, uh, major, major characters um, came to that meetup and, and Anna was there. So this is Anna's first development call. And uh, you'll see Anna pop up in various points of the Justice for Hire narrative. And this is our first time really talking about her exploring that character more deeply and uh, what that can mean, the implications for not only her personal narrative and the character, her character narrative, but also the implications for the larger Justice for Hire cinematic universe. So um, I, I'm on as a huge part of my personal filmmaking uh, life and career. And uh, I'm just so honored to do anything with her ever. And so welcome Anna to the JFH development call. Hello, so happy to be here. I am so excited to have been a part of the JFH uh, series for to be a participant in it the last few years. And I'm extremely excited to finally become a more, um, a more involved character. So I'm really excited to be talking to you today, Jan. And yeah, I'm excited to start. So, uh, people, uh, Anna has also written parts of Justice for Hire. She's helped to develop this new iteration of Justice for Hire. So it's it's actually a really, really huge deal. So um, I would love to start with just getting, obviously I play Jan in character uh, in Justice for Hire, but I'm also Jan out of character. But Jan out of character is the producer and Jan in character is the the, the founder of the Justice for Hire app which is like Uber for heroes, where you can hire a hero or, or become one and get paid. And the entire story that leads to that um, personal breakthrough of what, what's necessary for society to, to, for all of us to have a better world. And so I'm wondering for, for, for you playing Anna in character and out of character, um, can you tell us about in character Anna and, uh, for as much as you can, and we can always workshop ideas. Uh, and that's the first place to start. Like, who, who is who is Anna in character? Anna in character is not native from New York City, but she uh, she moved there, and she had to. I have a few ideas as to you know why she specifically decided to move to New York City if she is finding something or escaping something from back home. And I, I've had two ideas uh, so far, which have been that, uh, and she is a filmmaker, that is for certain. In, in character, Anna, Anna is a, a filmmaker in New York City, whether it be a videographer or a film director. Previously, she, as a child, which is similar to my personal past, uh, doesn't need to directly correlate. Um, I think I, I was thinking of a backstory that could be that she wanted to be a baker growing up because I love sweets. It's a massive part of my personality. I love going to cafes. I love sharing that experience with others. Um, I was, I, I don't know how uh, intense these backstories can be, but I wonder if it can be that, you know, her family maybe passed away or, uh, could be that they passed in a terrorist attack. I mean, I don't know how intense it can be, but that she, since then, she tries to protect her communities at all costs. Um, I made a typo on my laptop that said cats instead of costs, which I thought was funny. Um, or something where she was previously uh, assaulted and she never wanted any other woman to feel that same way again. And thus she tries to protect other women 
or empower them in New York City. So those are my two just ideas. Both of them feel you know, somewhat like there's a backstory. I'm trying to think of, you know, where did she begin and how does the story start for her? And then she comes to New York City and that influences her character in Justice for Fire. So I love that. <clears throat> and um, so my questions are, I, I, I like that you have, that you're, you're like, hey, you know, it could be this or it could be that. Um, and the intention with these, development calls if, if for, for anyone who doesn't know um, is to essentially have a Hollywood style development executive meeting about your um, story. And <clears throat> with the intention of not only developing the strongest story, but also developing a franchisable story. So <clears throat> of course you want to, uh, I, I like to emphasize authenticity. Um, I love that you have the filmmaker side because that allows for some really interesting, interesting narrative, um, narrative expression that we haven't seen yet in Justice for Hire. We haven't seen somebody, you know, when you, are, you may visualize it differently, but the first thing that's coming to my head is your character shooting something and potentially narrating that, um, mm. covering different parts of, of the world and intercutting the what you're shooting with a shot of you shooting it, you know? Um, <clears throat> you in an environment, taking a photo, and maybe, you know, some, if, if you can't get that shot of you shooting it for whatever reason, if you can't do it on your phone, et cetera, um, uh, you know, at, at the very least cutting from your footage to more of your footage, of uh, footage taken in character or framed as taken in character uh, from things that you've shot and in things that you've edited. And the, the ability to, to, to articulate the clarity of a storyteller um, or the, to articulate the ability for storytellers to connect dots. That's really more so um, what I think is really interesting to be able to say, hey, I have a character, my character is looking at what's happening in the world and seeing narrative. <clears throat> she can see what's happening with, let's say, Justice for Hire. She could see her story, and she may not necessarily be able to see an outcome, but she knows that those two things come together for a particular reason and how that could potentially connect to her past. Um, <clears throat> those are things that come to mind for me when you start talking about the idea of being a filmmaker. I like the idea of not being native from New York uh, because you are native from New York, right? That's and true. you don't feel like a New York native in, uh, in, I think in a similar way that I don't feel like a New York, New York native. People are always asking me, where are you from? They uh, ask me that same question too. They're like, where are you from? And I'm like, well, technically I'm from here, but. No. Well, we, we don't speak like we're from New York. And <clears throat> I think we move, we posture like we're from New York. Um, but I think that it's the movement and the posture that is New York is the, uh, New York has a very alpha um, uh, posturing. And the alpha posturing <clears throat> manifests in, in, in so many different ways because so many people, almost everybody, walking the streets in New York actually has that alpha posture. If you put a person in New York who's from New York next to someone who's not from New York, in my experience, you're gonna see that New York energy, that takeover, walk through, get out of my way, I'm, I'm going this way energy. And, um, and it's really, I love that energy. And it's, I think, very, very helpful everywhere else in the world. <laughs> um, oh, and, and, well, unless maybe not everywhere, but it's very helpful in many places in our Western culture. Um, <clears throat> so that said, on a filmmaker, um, <clears throat> I, I, when you ask the question of, you're not sure how far you can go with uh, backstory, when you meet, when you're talking about uh, potentially like death of a family, terrorists, et cetera, or um, something else potentially like uh, being assaulted 
and protecting other women, et cetera. Um, what, what do you mean by you're not sure how far you can go? Do you mean in terms of JFH rules or um, just in terms of where creatively for yourself? Creatively for myself. Okay. Um, I'm definitely wondering if there's, especially in the JFH, I wouldn't say a rule, but I'm wondering if there's a common um, boundary of like how intense a story can be. Like for again, for example, um, you know, the first thing pop thought that comes to my mind is: is it rated R, rated G? Like I'm trying to think of like you know, this is I should probably start with something that is safe for all audiences to watch, despite age. Mm -hmm. So that was my uh, question. Um, I, I look at I I think that that brings up a great question with how Marvel is going to handle Deadpool coming into the the Marvel Cinematic Universe because of <clears throat> um, the merger, the acquisition of Fox by Disney. Um, Deadpool was a, uh, if you, are you aware of the character Deadpool? Played yes. by Ryan Reynolds? Yes, I've seen so, it. Yes. Okay, so it's a rated R film. It's very, very in your face, uh, very raunchy. And they're bringing that character into MC MCU, which is Disney-fied. And so it is not, um, it's going to be interesting how they handle that, but I think that there, there has to be room for the rated R and has to be room for us to be able to mix the two. Um, that being said, I think that we have to be cautious and conscious as a brand, um, doing our best to, to, for everybody to follow the rules, uh, the, the universe rules, while also um, recognizing the trust is important. You know, like I know you as a filmmaker personally. I know you. I know your your character as a human being. Um, and there are people who might join. Most people who join just JFH, I have no idea who they are. You know, so as a producer uh, working toward a large shared cinematic universe and and working with everybody together to do something that's really never been done before, um, it takes a, a careful and watchful eye, I think, on on all of our parts to make sure that we make something that is, um, uh, that can be truly enjoyed. And mm -hmm. I think that that really comes down to, um, you know, if something's rated R, are we actually really enjoying it because it's rated R or are we enjoying it because it's it's a story that that, that gives us something that, that we're seeking in our lives to point us toward uh, hopefully the next stage of growth. You know, again, story as a tool. So, um, and people may not think of it that, that deeply. I think that, that at the very least, whether or not you recognize story as a tool for growth, at the very least, if you are telling the story that helps you feel like you're growing, then we're doing it. We're doing the right thing. So when it comes to that backstory, I think it's the thing that you want to uncover about yourself the most. Like that's what I would recommend. I would recommend that thing that you want to explore. There's stuff that I'm exploring for my character that I am terrified of right now. I am really concerned for my personal life right now. And I have to do this in a way that allows me to explore it because if I can't do it, then how am I gonna say it to, to other people I should do, that they should do it? Um, <clears throat> while also being cognizant that that there's a way to do it. Um, there's a way to do it with with care, and there's a way to do it with carelessness. And I have to be conscious for my own life of of how that's that's done. I'm like, okay, well, <clears throat> I have these things that I have to say. If I don't say it here, it's going to come out somewhere else. And I feel like with film, with audio, with visual combining, with with this type of story <clears throat> storytelling. I have the ability to have the, the greatest level of care because if I put it in a song, if I rap about it, you may only get part of the story. And if I, you know, if I say it somewhere else or I just say it in passing in a conversation, people may not understand the backstory and how this all ties together. So I'm, I've been working on this for years personally um, of how, you know, when we start live editing, uh, hopefully tomorrow, 
um, that's stuff that I'm actually going to be figuring out even live. So um, I would encourage anybody and everybody to 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 go for the thing that makes you explore something. I think that the I think the from from knowing you and how strong of your connection to your parents is having a storyline with parents who are gone is could be could be valuable um but from from knowing you i think having them alive and having them um be major influences in what your character is choosing could be really valuable. Wow. That, that would be in, I would, wow. Wow. I just writing some of these notes down. Um, you bringing, then have, them on, but, bringing them on as, as people that I film that like influence my decisions, that would be, that I would love to see your mom and dad in in your storyline. Oh and my god! Especially if you can involve your family as actors. So, in other words, like yes. you know, you you always talk about the Czech mafia. You know? I do. I and I, I've tried to stop using that word because I feel as though it has a negative connotation. To it, it has a totally like, negative connotation. It's I'm very sorry. negative. <laughs> I call them the Czech family um, because we're very, or the Czech community in New York City because we're we're so close and it's somewhat amazing and fascinating and inspiring how close we are even after years have passed. Haven't seen this one person in forever, but your heart goes out to them the moment that you see them, and I don't like you know bringing my parents on as people that can influence decisions of my character in the story. I love it. Yes. I would totally be on board with that. I love that idea. And just as you were saying, like, you know, having them be alive, I feel that that would be way, way more, that would, that would, it aligns, it feels more aligned to me that they're alive in the JFH series. Well, in, in my character story, I mean. Sure. And, and, I, and I'll say this, I'd say this, that I have to remind myself even um, anytime I do these, anytime I talk to anybody about their story, that your story happens with or without JFH. I think that's a really important thing to, to keep in mind, that <clears throat> JFH crosses over into your character's narrative, but it shouldn't be the, the main, could be but it doesn't have to be the main um, catalyzing experience for your character's journey into heroism or villainism or whatever you want to go, <laughs> you, know, like, you know, any of the things that your, your character's doing, it doesn't have to be uh, the, the, the impetus. So I think that what we're really talking about here is what story you want to tell, what stuff do you want to explore through the lens of this alter ego that you have crafted for yourself, especially if you're using your own name. You know, I think about, I had to look a lot to, um, cause previously in Justice for Hire, previous iterations, I played another character who was always the hardest character for me to write. And I was playing a character that I didn't feel, but all the other characters were way easier. So, I, because I essentially took myself, split myself into four characters um, wow. And the one that I played was the one that was least, um, least who I wanted to be. And, um, and the fifth character, but the only one that, that's returned to Justice for Hire, which is a character named Louisa, who's a police officer character, who's gone vigilante, was my favorite character to write. And because I felt so free writing her. And so, um, so I, I say this because what I'm doing now is again, looking at myself and saying, okay, well, what, what's the journey I really want in my life? And for, for this alter ego, what story, what story would I like to tell about myself and explore? I, I, I feel at, very much at times uh, like a person that wants to speak to the world on a podium 
and talk about really important things that we need to do and then go do those things. So how can I use Justice for Hire as a tool to tell stories about the things that I think are important in life and, and to make very bold statements to the world? That's how I'm using Justice for Hire. <clears throat> so as a, as a writer, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an actor. Um, and so I think that for, for your character, it would be very interesting. You know, we've, we've touched on so many things. There's even spoiler alert for anybody watching. Um, you know, you played a ninja character in 2020, you know, and these ninjas pop in and no one knows that that's you. They may not, like, we may not have to tie that together at all into what we're doing. But I think that that's, <clears throat> there is narrative potency in the concept of, of telling a story out of character now I'm talking, telling a story uh, that you can have fun with your family with, um, especially while you're still living in New York uh, and, and close to them, that to, to be able to say, hey, you know what? I have, I have this much time with my family right now. I would like to shoot some fun scenes with them. What are fun scenes I can shoot with my family that tie into a continuous narrative? And that would be <clears throat> meaningful even going forward because when you look at um, episodic storytelling, cinematic universe world building, um, you want the past to be influencing the, the future. Uh, and you can, you can always add you know, prequel stuff. You can always add stuff later, but right now you're surrounded by your family. You know, like again, I'm not I'm, I'm not saying do a Czech mafia thing, but I think that that's hilarious and awesome and can be really weighted in an awesome way of, of, of potentially having you be some form of, of instrument for the family uh, and and you also having some form of of uh, of personal vendetta against something that might have happened in the past um, that further informs you to make different decisions potentially than what the family is asking you to do. And I think that's interesting. Like, like you might, let's say that there's a, there's a version of the story where Anna is, is from a Czech mafia family. You go and you do things for the family that, 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 you know, uh, hardcore, you know, you might be the muscle of the family. Who knows? I don't know. Like, but maybe you are. And then something happens to you. Like you you've let your guard down in some particular scenario because you wanted something. Um, especially if you're a filmmaker. You know, like filmmakers are notorious. The film industry is notorious for people who who are are coveting a particular level of achievement in life, and therefore they let their principles fall to the wayside. And then they feel used. That is that is a normal, natural story in our toxic film industry environment. And I think that if you tie together the filmmaker with the Czech mafia, you, the, the, the filmmaker, the artistic side will essentially allow certain types of weakness and vul vulnerability, let's call it, certain types of vulnerability in your character that allows the character to receive challenges that <clears throat> might be completely counter to the lifestyle that the family has raised you for. And therefore, those, the mixing of those two can then become, uh, you know, essentially catalyze um, a, a lot more of your, of your personal characters, like growth and, and uh, story and tie in Justice for Hire, et cetera. Wow. No, I love that. I, 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 yeah, I love that. That's, that sounds like my story. <laughs> and that sounds like something most importantly that I, one of my first thoughts was that I actually do have scenes of something that does look like Czech mafia. There is a meeting point. It's an underground, it's literally an underground church. Uh, and then across the street, there's an underground room that everyone comes to gather in for after church service. And it feels somewhat mafia-esque uh, because we all know each other. We maybe see each other once a year, but I have footage of that. 
And not only that, but I think I could shoot a few fun scenes with my family. This is a storyline that can, um, can challenge me and allow me to grow. Mm-hmm. I am definitely wondering what that, I may need to reflect on what is that personal vendetta that against something that then former, that informs me to do something differently than my family would otherwise uh, tell me to do. Um, and Which also might be a secret, super important. Like that's also true. As I find my charger, ooh, a person, a secret. As in, what I mean is that that if your family has principles, like if if you have a strict family that uh, is in a unique position, and you've allowed yourself to be vulnerable in a way that the family would not necessarily deem acceptable from a family member, and you failed in that way, like you've had something happen that that would be considered a, a, a character failure, you may not want to share that. It may be a secret. It may be you may, it may be tough to share. Um, and or it may be you, you know maybe you're very evolved and you do share it and it causes a rift. Um, so I think that the that it just the concept of it being a secret is is uh, whether it's a secret or whether it's it's out in the open, one, one or the other pushes you to have a side life. Um, I think if it's out in the open, it might push you to have a more overt outside life. And if it's a secret, it may be, you maybe you have a secret life as well. Um, <clears throat> but getting to the concept of the of the footage, I, one thing I really want to be, um, I, I can't emphasize enough is cautious caution against overwriting um what what i mean by that is that <clears throat> this development call can lead to so many ideas that you highly recommend you write you write down and that that you know we even have a backstory on the jfh app there's a backstory tab on your profile and you can just write your profile your backstory in there i i always recommend everybody to have that written somewhere else um, and then copy paste it in uh, from your phone and just, you know you have it all there and you can write as much as you want um <clears throat> but having having this backstory written is phenomenal because then you can reference different points in it and shoot those versus shooting a script what i mean by that is that that if you write out an entire script um not to say that you shouldn't it is more challenging from my experience to say oh, you know what? I need this scene and I need this scene and I need this scene and I can only make this work if I have all these scenes. And that's not really what we're, we're, we're pushing for yet in Justice for Hire or in real world. The concept is shoot the single scene, like shoot the moment. If you, even if you, don't, if you don't have the scene, shoot the moment. It could be simply you washing your face. I went to a wedding um, who you met, Adam, my buddy Adam. I went to Adam's wedding in September and <clears throat> I shot a scene in the bathroom. I literally just set up the phone. I, I walked in there. I was like, man, this is a great scene because I went in and I did something funny that was very in my character and by myself in the bathroom. I was like, hold on, I should shoot this. I'm like, you know, I do a little point in the mirror. But I'm like, why don't I just shoot this? Because if I shoot this, <clears throat> then I have that moment captured and I can tie that into the story however I like. And then I got you know a few other casual moments at the wedding, but all of that I can tie into the narrative for my personal narrative in JFH because my personal narrative not all of it's going to make it into the series. There's going to be stuff that's on the side. So <clears throat> I think it's important to recognize that you might say there might be a conversation with you and one of your family members that you just want to capture on 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 video or on film. Um, and what I mean by on video or film, obviously you'd probably both be shooting on, on video cameras, but like you should feel totally fine using your phone and capturing a moment that that feels, you know, cinematic for, for and, and narratively uh, associated with, with the story you want to tell. And if you can just keep on capturing these small moments, you absolutely can tie it together, especially with narration. Uh, you can absolutely tie it together um, great narration, great music, 
uh, and when we have a, a you know a music library you can use. But those two things are going to put you in a position where you can start crafting at least the tone of your world, and it makes it a lower lift than saying, okay, I wrote this scene that takes place ten years ago. It cut to now. I'm standing on top of a rooftop looking all over the city. You know, like, like yeah. how, how am I going to get this shot and this shot? I need actors. I need, you know, I mean, I do recommend getting some lav mics because they're pretty cheap and you can just ha have them around. But um, aside from that, like, just capture the moments that you feel like will, will um, uh, you know, are, are, are that you can share a 15 to 60 second clip of and be like, yeah, this is something I'm working on that's intriguing. And I think that, that's what's really going to help push us um, as a as a community. You know, since you're, you've been so involved from foundationally, that's the kind of stuff that we want people doing, um, and on their own. And guys like you, Long, uh, Eric, <clears throat> aka you, Long, and JFH, you know, he shot ten episodes of, of all literally by himself. He's the only character. He's got ten episodes that are at least three minutes long each so he shot a significant wow. amount of stuff that he's edited together and all this other stuff and it's and it's and it's i mean there's scope there i mean so i mean I, I he's very focused every week shooting stuff that's awesome um but it shouldn't you shouldn't have to be so organized with your story etc uh you want to be organized but you shouldn't have to it, it should feel natural in my from from my experience I shoot scenes of JFH at any given moment because they feel natural to me. And I know my general story enough that I can say this moment cuts here. And all I have to do is share that moment. Um, when we start doing the live editing, I'll be asking for specific scenes from heroes saying, hey, I need you. I need some heroes doing this or doing that. And I'll cut them in like that'll be fine. Um, but I, you know, I, I say all of this just because I want to make sure that, that from a development standpoint, you feel really good about where, <clears throat> where your story is, even even now, um, that you can take some action on. I feel definitely good about my story, and I feel I can start making scenes with my family that. Uh, can tie in together, I like that you said that I don't have to be so organized that it should feel natural. Um, and I'm just thinking of a few ideas that I'll capture after this call of you know, what are, what could be something that, uh, you know, what was that vulnerability? What was that counter lifestyle that my family has taught me? Um, but starting with my family will at least help me set a tone for, um, for my piece. And it also reminds me of the uh, the footage of myself that was test footage footage with uh, Samo, the uh, amazing uh, cinematographer, director of photography for, uh, for scenes in JFH. And um, I'm in trying, not overthinking it, but just thinking of how that footage can help me, because it's solo footage of myself, how that footage can show um, can capture vulnerability or can capture that the beginning of going against that lifestyle decision for my family. So um, this is very exciting and it makes me want to dive into what that story is and to do this work on my own. Question, because this this to me is very intriguing. I just want to see, see how, how, what you think about it. Um, <clears throat> cutting any of that footage together, intercut with your your so the footage will be intercut this mm -hmm. is your main line intercut with you skinning an animal that you hunted i have done that before had do you have footage of you skinning an animal no because it's it's uh i wow i do have because you know it's to honor the life of the animal and never you know leave anything to waste it's part of our philosophy um yeah, I can get footage of that. I mean, that's that's something that I do with my follower in um in our downtime. But why? I would love to know, like, why do you think that would do you think that would show uh, X about the about the character? Or? I think it says it's very so much. 
It's, it, it, well, I think multiple reasons, because <clears throat> I don't know if you're, uh, you know, I should ask the question of genre. I think you're still figuring out genre. Yeah. Um, JFH is genre agnostic. So um, similar to, to the MCU, Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's like, you know, you got all these different genres coming together because there's the characters dictate the genre. Um, <clears throat> showing somebody carefully handling a, 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 an animal that has been hunted with, with the type of care that you've described to me. Um, and I, I, believe you, I, I believe you gave me some of that meat at one point. I know you gave me bread, but I think you gave me bread and the meat. I think I did. That's um, true. That's true. And I think that That shows that this person is, is used to doing things that most people are not in our society. Most people are not used to hunting. There are a lot of them that are, but most people aren't. And, um, and even so, to handle, have the blood on your hands says so much to have the blood of the animal on your hands. Like the, these are the little images that that tying together with whatever you're talking about in a narration intercut with any of that footage that Sam Nang has shot of you or that any footage you might shoot on your own, whether on your phone or, or, or beautifully taken on a more high-end camera, um, it starts to paint together tone and uh, gives a sense of, of, of importance. I think that's really the, the thing that how can you draw an audience member in to a moment uh, and have them feel a visceral reaction to it that keeps them there. Visceral can mean, oh my God, I gotta get away. And visceral can mean, oh my God, what's happening here? Because there's, there's intrigue and there's a, a sense of primal, um, primal understanding. And I just throw these ideas out there to you because if you have a family that's that's in the Czech mafia, if you have a fun, uh, a fun but yet serious uh, tone with with your parents as characters, um, and if you have community, uh, and potential duty, you personally have duty. All of those things, all of those concepts I just named, all, all tie together uh, with a, a, can be tied together with a singular strong image. And a singular strong image can be some people might use, you know, someone lying in bed by themselves looking beautiful, you know, uh, mm -hmm. showing skin. That, that, that connects to a primal um sense um blood connects to a primal sense and i'm talking about base emotions right now base feelings while also understanding that we want to use these stories to elevate uh, far above the base and <clears throat> i think there's a a way to tie together the things that capture our attention and the things that lead us to a new perspective. And I think there's a very delicate balance there that I rarely see that I believe that a filmmaker of your talent can pull off. So I think any of those images, but again, I think that a very unique image that can be respectfully taken uh, that's unique to your experience uh, is, is the hunting. Um, and even even the you know your experience of shooting the gun that time and, and getting the gash on the head, and getting the gash, yeah, yeah and was... being able to even put blood on your on your head, and even talk about that, you just like you touching your head with blood, like and and just having a narration that talks about that one moment. If you only shot a moment that said, like I would you know while you're cutting it, cutting the animal up and, and skinning the animal. And said like you know at one point I I I, I shot uh, something along the lines of I shot a gun that was too heavy for me, and 
got this, got this gash. And if you just, if we had 15 seconds of you saying that while looking out, like while cutting uh, the animal and, and just animal, doing that, yeah. like, like just imagine what that, what that feels like for somebody watching it being like, what is this? And, and how that could tie together with the rest of the story. Uh, these, again, these are all just ideas I'm tossing out there, but I think that each one of them um, helps to showcase the level of intrigue that you can already do on your own um, because of, of who you are and because the story that you're, that you are, it seems like uh, from my understanding of your perspective so far, uh, uh, that's clarified on the call, um, by you choosing a story that's more personal to you, th th these are accessible for you. It's true. And, and they're powerful. I think when you say that it is, you know, it's a fun yet serious tone and um, it, it is, it's important to me, I suppose, even that just that act of, um, there's, there's a story behind it, there's values behind it that are serious and upheld. And I do agree that by me choosing a story that's closer to my roots, I actually am just realizing there's so much for me to choose from. And that's just, that's just one of it, to be honest. Um, yeah, and even thinking about how I used to be a, a construction worker growing up in high school and um, like painting for my, father's construction company with other men that were uh, from Eastern Europe and the camar camaraderie felt there, the level of respect that even if I was much younger and um, that we all shared, a culture that we shared. And I can already, yeah, I definitely think that by choosing material for my own personal life, I can choose um, I can be a lot more inspired with my character. Yeah, I'm, I'm always happy to, to like, you know, to, to do another development call or, or like talk about, um, or, or just go back and forth. We, you know, we, we don't necessarily need to do formality of the, of the development call, but I mean, just to go back and forth on, the, on any uh, story points that you want to workshop, because it sounds to me like what I personally want to see with, with Anna, uh, with you in general, is somebody who is, I just want to see your story on screen. And, and, uh, and what I mean by that is that not necessarily your life story of how, which is very interesting and very uh, inspiring. And, and, you know, you're, you, you, you naturally hold your, your, your own power. And I love that. <clears throat> um, but the, the alter ego version of Anna of, of having the, the, this, 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 this Czech mafia narrative uh, of, of being <clears throat> uh, not, you don't necessarily have to be an action hero. But to have somebody who goes up against the up against tough people and tough things as part of your lifestyle, and how and something that happened that might be again a secret or or uh, the, in a moment that you were vulnerable that you that caused you to say you know what I need to take I need to do things a little differently right now and I can't do it in the family, and maybe JFH is an outlet for you for that. And that outlet then puts you on, you know, the types of missions you take on are the ones that allow you to get out some of that, um, that energy that's, that's, that's uh, now gathered inside because of this event and combines your, the skill sets that you have from your family. And now you're going out on missions and you're saying, okay, well, I'm taking, I'm going to take this person down because of, because I, I know I can or I'm going to help this person out because I know I can, you know, it doesn't have to be violence against a person. Um, and it, it, it could be helpfulness, but knowing that, uh, and not, that's not to say that sometimes like use of force isn't helpful because it absolutely can be. But um, all I'm getting at is that, that using the JFH uh, uh, device story device as a means to get your character out there doing certain things is uh, I think very helpful. And it's also important to note that it is only a story device and your character could be doing those things already. And then realizing that, you know, it could be, it, it, it could be for like, huh, maybe 
maybe I, I I've done something that the family's pushed me out, you know, which might, you know, when you, when you are farther away from your family, when you move, uh, uh, you know, potentially come to LA, et cetera. Um, you know, and you might be in a situation where you can't shoot around them. And so maybe narratively you say, Oh, you know what? The family's made me pushed me out, you know, like maybe, and wow. now maybe you're using JFH then to make extra cash, you know? So that that's all of these things are, are different ways to kind of tie together the JFH as a device, because maybe you were already helping people or, or beating up people or whatever you're doing as a character to get that energy out. Maybe you already were doing it around your family and maybe that, that helped to, maybe that pushed you out. Maybe they found out and they, they said, you know what, that's it, you're done. You're getting out of here, we're sending you away. And so you're like, you know what, I'm gonna keep on doing that. There's all these different, and I found JFH is gonna help me do it. So there's all these different ways to, to, to interweave these narratives but I think that you having that strong base and establishing for, uh, if, if, if we really want to talk about uh, the reality of, of telling a, a concise story, because I think that, that you know, before we finish up, I want to, want to really state that it is important to me personally as a storyteller to understand a beginning, middle, and end, while also knowing that stories can keep going. So what is the chapter that you're telling? And being able to, to look at it in that way and say, okay, well, in this chapter, here's my beginning, middle, and end for this part of my story. And, you know, you might, every scene has a beginning, middle, and end. Every act has a beginning, middle, and end. Every three-act structure, <laughs> you know, for a film obviously is beginning, middle, and end. Um, but I, I think it's, if, if you start thinking in those little, in that beginning, middle, end kind of a, a, a structure for yourself and just say, well, I want to tell the story of, how my life is with my family before I integrate JFH. Cool. What is the beginning, middle, end of that? And if you look at screenwriting and you look at the inciting incident or the first plot point, inciting incident is essentially what takes you from status quo, normally happens in the first 10 pages of a script, five to 10 pages of a script, takes you from status quo to the main challenge um, that or the main challenge that changes your 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 state into a new state where you have to start contemplating new ideas by the end of that first act you have your plot point that culminates uh essentially the the from that that inciting incident now you've you've hit a wall where you have to really make a choice whether or not you're going on the adventure or not uh and so like that and the end of that first act or that first chapter can be like, you know what, this thing that happened to me, this, this secret, et cetera, um, that's changed my perspective of my life. Now I actually have to follow through and I have to start doing things differently. And, you know, again, it doesn't have to be JFH. JFH could be something that happens in, again, speaking screenwriter structurally um, in act two, which is plot point number two. Plot point two could be, uh, essentially the thing that that uh, that spins you from it helps to spin you from act two to act three to, to the final conclusion but it's like hey i'm i've i'm out on my own now and i need something um that's going to help me uh, stay afloat and maybe that's jfh you know um while you're working on your film stuff and to, to try to make it in in la on your own you know, they, they could they could that could totally be it um you know there's there's just so many different ways to do it and I, I don't love what I just said. I'm just doing my best to kind of give you a sense of beginning, middle, end, because you have this, you have all so much um, density in the narratives around you and you have people around you that are very strong. They're, they, they have very strong, uh, each one of them has a very strong presence. So I know that if I saw your father on screen or your mother on screen, it's going to, it's going to ripple through the screen because of their character. As, as people. So, you know, I think that, that being able to make a conscious choice saying, you know what, uh, I maybe, maybe you want to explore them a little bit. Uh, and, and, and that could be fun too. And just telling those stories, people are going to like that. It's It's going to be fun just seeing that. And then it's going to be fun figuring out how is she tying JFH into this narrative? 
And I, that's what all of our, you know, our journey challenges on the app are all about. We've um, essentially taken the hero's journey, truncated it into 15 points. And if you just go onto the app into the you know, little superhero icon and the first tab is journey, you'll see each one of these challenges that'll help you structure uh, the story you want to tell. And uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to follow that particular structure because it is very particular and it will give you your own mini movie. But if you did, that might be something that could be helpful in defining um, defining what you're doing. But simultaneously, you're so advanced as a filmmaker that it might be, you might find it limiting. Or you might find a little bit, mixing a little bit of both, saying like, you know, I'm going to do this my way, but this thing right here, I should probably do. And so, uh, but that resource is there for you when you're ready. Awesome. I think no matter what level or stage as a filmmaker I am, finding uh, additional resources to help, I'll always be open to them. So I'll look, take a look at that and, uh, and see. Yeah, to take, take a look at them. And because the, the intention of those journey challenges is for you to be able to shoot right now. Like, you know, you open up your phone and you're like, oh, well, what's the setting? Well, this is my setting. This is my room. I, we, I just, this past week, uh, we just put out uh, an eight minute walkthrough video of the setting, you know? And again, this is for folks who are, are may not be uh, uh, aware of what the certain ter terminologies mean for filmmaking, et cetera. Um, but there's also stuff in there that's, that's there's some hidden gems in that video um, for, for film in, in general. Um, and so like, you know, I, it's, it's on YouTube right now. Um, I can send you a link to it, but um, yeah, I just, I just want to be helpful because I think this is really great. I'm very, very excited. I'm very, very excited that, uh, that you're finally uh, stepping up in, more in character. I think it's, it's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. And it feels right and i'm excited i love the idea of the eight minute walkthrough video of the settings so like in my mind i'm thinking like oh, it would be great to get some setting shots of um even my family's home or um yeah so i'm just i'm just thinking about that but i'm excited about this it's gonna be great and i will i'll be chatting with you about those story points and seeing how i can uh, start now I'm getting you these links right now so you can just. Thank you. Uh, there we go. Justice for hire. That's us. That's us. Awesome. Hold on. How do I get this for you? Okay, I got the link. So, yeah, we have two walkthroughs up right now. Um, we paused on making on making more of them because we needed to focus on on uh, on some of the uh, um, just everything we've been building. But it's like okay, yeah. well, we're going to get back to there's the a lot. Through. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening simultaneously. But I think that these first two, we I really would like to be able to do uh, um, a walkthrough for each one of these. But I also want to make sure that that people are finding them as valuable as possible. So uh, hence again. Um, uh, the the importance of us like taking these moments and, and pulling them in the clips, but that's a conversation for another another time. For uh, another time. Uh, so I want to end. I'm going to end that development call, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll end the development call. But I will, I'll, you and I will stay on for a second afterward. Uh, okay. So let me just say thank you to everybody who watches these. Always reach out. You can schedule your own development call from justiceforhire.app on the banner of the world page. You can just slide the banners. Uh, the, the, the carousel that's on the top has all little graphics on it for each of our upcoming events. Slide it till you see schedule a development call, press that button and you will schedule a development call with me. It'll be great. I'm Jan. So, uh, but I will say, uh, do not schedule a development call unless you've actually produced some content. So that means like at least have three pieces of content up. That's our criteria for somebody who, who is, is, is on the JFH app. Um, again, Anna has been a part of and in Justice for Higher Scenes for a very long time. Um, so, but in general, shoot some stuff, show us you're serious, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, we love you guys uh, and reach out anytime. And uh, it's been Justice for Higher Development with Anna.